Welcome to today's presentation where we're going to talk about congestive cardiac failure. So when uh, we look at the word congestive, what does it simply mean when we say congestive? Congestive was simply referring to congestion, okay? Then cardiac, it is the heart. And failure meaning the inability, okay? The inability. So what is congestive cardiac failure? Meaning that the heart, it is actually failing. So how can we define congestive cardiac failure? So in simple words, or to simply define it, we can say this is the inability, okay, ability of the heart to pump, is the inability of the heart to pump enough blood, okay, for metabolic need of the body so heart failure what is it it is the inability of the heart to pump enough blood for metabolic need of the body so this is the definition of the heart failure meaning that the heart is not able to pump enough blood so that the metabolic need of the body are being met so what are some of these of heart failure so the cause of heart failure it is unknown it is idio Pathic. The cause of heart failure, it is idiopathic, but we have some of the predisposing factors or the risk factors, okay? We have some of the predisposing factors of heart failure or the risk factors. So these are things if you don't take into consideration or due to some other effect, you can actually have or you can develop heart failure your heart can actually start to fail to pump enough blood, okay? So what are some of the predisposing factors? So one of the predisposing factors that actually causes the most commonest cause of left side heart failure, it is coronary, coronary artery diseases, okay? Coronary artery disease. You know that... The coronary artery, it is the artery that actually supplies the myocardium with oxygen and nutrient. So what is going to happen? And you know that the myocardium, which is the middle layer, which is the middle muscle, sorry, it is the heart muscle. It is the one that is actually important in contractility of the heart. So if that muscle undergoes, if there is ischemia to that muscle, meaning that that muscle is going to undergo necrosis. And it is going to fail to actually pump blood into the systemic circulation or maybe to the lungs. So coronary artery disease, it is the most commonest cause of left-sided heart failure. Okay? When the coronary arteries they have become they have been, they are diseased, meaning that there will be ischemia or reduced blood perfusion to the myocardium. If there is reduced blood perfusion to the myocardium, the heart mass, which is the myocardium, it's going to lose the elasticity to actually pump uh, blood into the systemic circulation or the pulmonary circulation. Then we also have what we call as uh, uh, increased blood volume, which is hypertension. Okay? So hypertension also predisposes one to develop or have congestive cardiac failure. How does it does? How do you actually, how are you predisposed to have uh, heart failure when you have hypertension? Remember that in hypertension, there is increased workload of the heart. So if there is increased workload of the heart, meaning that the heart, it will be actually working at an increased rate for it to pump enough blood to the systemic circulation. So as you deliver oxygen to the tissues. So because of the heart being at an increased workload, the heart muscle is going to hypertrophy and when the heart muscle hypertrophy it's going to lose its elasticity to contract okay that's how hypertension will cause uh, actually congestive cardiac failure we also have uh, what we call as uh, congenital okay congenital uh, heart deformities uh, or defect, congenital heart defects. 
so what are these congenital heart defects so for example if someone may be born with a congenital defect like uh, a congenital defect that will actually damage the structure of the heart meaning that that heart it's going to fail to actually do its work and pumps blood out okay then we also have uh, what we call as uh, arrhythmias arrhythmias okay so an arrhythmia this is the the irregular the irregular heartbeat of the heart sometimes the heart may beat fast sometimes the heart may beat slow so because of that it is actually cause failing of the heart to actually ejaculate the blood out into the systemic circulation we also have uh, valvular diseases or valvular let's just say valves uh, valves disorders okay valves disorders so under these valves disorders we are saying we can have uh, stenosis of the valve if we have stenosis of one of the valve of the heart meaning that the heart it will actually be working at a faster rate there will be increased workload of the heart for it to actually ejaculate or pump blood into the systemic circulation let's take for instance if we have aortic uh, aortic stenosis which is stenosis of the aortic valve meaning that the left ventricle it, it will actually it's going to increase its workload for it to actually empty the blood in the ventricle and that is going to lead to hypertrophy of the heart muscle leading to congestive cardiac failure okay so these are some of the predisposing factors or the risk factors for congestive cardiac failure but what are the types of congestive cardiac failure what are the types of congestive cardiac failure so when you look at the types of congestive cardiac failure we've got two types so we have two types of congestive cardiac failure the first one so we're looking at the types of ccf so what are some of the types of congestive cardiac failure one is that we have got what we call as the left-sided heart failure left-sided heart failure this left-sided heart failure it is the failure of the left ventricle to empty the blood into the systemic circulation leading to build up or backflow of blood into the pulmonary veins okay this is the failure of the left ventricle to empty the blood into the systemic circulation leading to leading to backflow of blood in the pulmonary veins so in here we have two types of heart failure okay under left uh, left side of that failure we've got two types we have got what we call as the systolic systolic ventricular failure systolic ventricular failure this is the failure of the ventricle to contract okay the failure of the ventricle to contract and empty the blood into the systemic circulation so if the ventricle it's not contracting to empty the blood it's going to lead to systolic ventricular failure then we also have got what we call as the diastolic ventricular failure okay so this is the failure of the ventricle to relax and allow feeling of the ventricle so these are the two types of left-sided heart failure then we also have the right-sided heart failure okay right-sided heart failure or right heart failure so right-sided heart failure it is actually the failure of the right ventricle to pump blood to the lungs leading to build up of blood in the veins okay leading to build up of blood in the veins so this is right-sided heart failure and this is left-sided heart failure so thank you very much for watching actually the this presentation for congestive cardiac failure in the next presentation we are going to discuss in details the pathophysiology of congestive cardiac failure as well as the signs and symptoms